On the 6th of May 2023, the world will watch on as the coronation of King Charles III unfolds. There will be all the pomp and pageantry that Britain is so well known for, and then there will be the ceremonial element that takes place within Westminster Abbey itself. At the heart of that service will be the crown jewels, uh, a number of objects that we refer to as the crown jewels. We have the imperial crown, the St Edward's crown, uh, the orb and the scepter are all part of the crown jewels and they will be centre stage uh, during the, the ceremonial element of the coronation. They embody monarchy, they symbolise royalty. I had the privilege of working at Buckingham Palace for two and a half years as a part of the private secretary's office. And I remember one day that stands out in my mind when uh, we as staff were given the opportunity to go to one of the staterooms and to have a private viewing of the crown jewels. And it was wonderful to go and to get an up close view of them, to see the intricacy and the detail and the beauty of these incredible objects. You can go and see them, of course, in the Tower of London. And I would encourage you to go in and do that. Uh, they are amazing objects. Of course, they're inestimable in value uh, and uh, you couldn't put a price on them really, but there are those who've tried to estimate their commercial value and uh, they would estimate it to be between three and five billion pounds. Between three and five billion pounds. I was just reflecting on that and thinking, what is my life worth? In comparison to that, what is my life worth? What's your life worth? Well, the Bible gives a clear answer to that. In Psalm 49, let me read verses 7 and 8. Truly no man can ransom another, or give to God the price of his life, for the ransom of their life is costly and can never suffice. So the Bible is telling us here that no man, no person, can pay enough to ransom the life of another human being. But later in the psalm we read this lovely promise in verse 15, but God will ransom my soul. But God will ransom my soul. Why do we need to be ransomed? We know what a ransom is, of course. It's a, a fee, a, a price paid to secure somebody's freedom, to release them from captivity. But you know, the Bible paints the very accurate picture that all of us are sinful. And that means that we do say and think wrong things all the time. And if we're really honest, we know that's true. Nobody's perfect, are they? And we're all sinful. We all fall short of the glory of God, the Bible tells us. And the Bible paints a picture of sin as being captive. We are captured by sin. And we are therefore separated from a holy and a good and a perfect and a pure God. But God has provided a way for our souls to be ransomed. There's not many ways. There's only one way. You see, here in this psalm, we read that a man can't ransom another. So I can't ransom myself and others can't ransom me. You know, the church can't pay the ransom for my soul. A religious organisation can't pay the ransom for my soul. There's only one person who can do that. And in Acts chapter 4, we read this. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, we read this. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that, of course, is the name of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can ransom me and set me free from sin, securing forgiveness for me. But how? But how? Well, God intervened. This God of love intervened into human history, sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came and he lived a human life, entirely human and entirely divine, 100% man, 100% God. He lived a perfect, sinless life. And yet it had one great focus. Yes, he provided teaching that's revolutionised human society. And he healed many. He restored the sight of the blind. He made lame people walk. He walked on the surface of the sea. He turned water into wine. All of these things are true. But ultimately he came to go to the cross where he was crucified. There he died. And why did he die? He died to set us free. He died to pay the ransom price. You see, not only does the Bible say that we're all sinners, but it goes further. It says that the wages of that sin, the result, the end payment due for that sin is death. But that death price has been paid by the only man who never deserved it. And that was the perfect man, 
Jesus Christ, the Son of the true and living God. I wonder how you respond to the message of Jesus Christ. We call it the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, later uh, in the New Testament, in the book of 1 Peter and chapter 1, we read this. You were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Throughout the whole Old Testament system of worship, lambs were slain and killed in sacrifice. And each of these points forward to the perfect Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to pay the price for my sin and for your sin. I wonder if you will recognise him for who he truly is. You see, not only did he die, but three days later, just as he promised, he rose from the dead by the power of God. And he's alive today. He is a saviour who is living and still out there saving men and women, boys and girls, still making this offer of free salvation. Will you accept it? Will you take him as your Lord and as your saviour? You know, millions of years from now, the crown jewels will have perished. Uh, They'll have gone. They'll be dust. And yet the Lord Jesus places such a value on your life and mine that he was willing to shed his own precious blood. And that blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, still cleanses from all sin today. And if you were to simply place your faith, which means your trust in Jesus, accept him as your saviour, recognising that, yes, I'm a sinner, and I need a saviour from sin, if I'm not to go to hell, that place of eternal judgment, but I'm to be promised forgiveness and a place in heaven through faith in Christ. There is only one way, there is only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and that is the name of Jesus Christ. How will you respond to him today? Accept him as your Lord and as your Saviour. That's the worth that God places upon your life. He was willing to give his one and his only son. Thank you.